own night, and he's got quite a number of films and television appearances under his belt already. I say no more, wonderful personality, give him a nice big round of applause for the one only Bobby Clark. Telling you about the little laddies, you know, little lads outwitting themselves, not outwitting themselves, darling, but outwitting themselves. Do you, you remember that? Well, I thought I'd tell you about it. Mother, mother catches her three year old son smoking. She said, Johnny, this is absolutely disgusting. Smoking at your age? He said, That's nothing. He's ever had sex too. <laughs> she said, You've had what? He's ever had sex too. She said, uh, what was it like? I don't know, I was drunk at the time. <laughs> uh, can I ask you something? You know, recently, you know, I was work just before I come down here, I was working in Manchester, you know, and I give a tap at the door and a woman comes to the door and she said, can I help you? I said, Mrs, you can help me any time, but I said, tonight I'm stuck and I need somewhere to stay, somewhere to sleep. Well, she said, it's like this. She said, there's not really much room. Well, I said, I don't mind. She said, no, as long as you're happy. <coughs> I crept upstairs. Half me old Coco. <laughs> You've got wicked minds, you know. <laughs> and through the crack of the door, I saw a little boy kneeling at the end of the bed like that. Mrs. Woman, don't you think that's wonderful? Don't you... Well, I thought so too. So I crept in, you see, and I knelt down, and I put my hands together. <laughs> All of a sudden, he puts his head up. He says, oi. I said, me? He said, yes, you. I said, what? He said, mum and I'll be upset with you. I said, why? He said, there ain't mum that side.
time away. The other day I lost a couple of to me. She was just her 21, in the 83. The rain came down, they got the dance, and then sat down to welcome man. He could get up, he got the ground, cut the time away. My words, you never know when you're going to get caught out. Now, if you listen to the words this next number very carefully, you'll see just what I mean. Let's do something like this. Who can tell the ladies? The Lynchy. There were two needy ways. Their faces were so red. They went downstairs to bed. The house was full of fear. She took out her glass out. Left other climbed in between the blankets. She said, Come on, my dear. I said, No, dear. I'd rather stay out here among your souvenirs.
number which is the classic number, all classic, and I mean Mash. Everything is lovely when I'm alone. The birds sing, the days is grey. I wait for you, I love the moon. It was be so lovely when I'm alone. It was you be saying when you're far from home.
Ladies and gentlemen, now once again I'd like to present the boys and girls who've been entertaining you, your 1965 Redcoats. Here he is, Bobby Park. I'm gonna live till I die. I'm gonna laugh instead of cry. I'm gonna turn the town and turn it upside down. I'm gonna live, live, live till I die. We're gonna say what a guy. I'm gonna play right up to the sky. Ain't gonna miss a thing, I'm gonna have my fling I'm gonna live, live, live till I die The people lay low, I make them stay low They never trail over my head I'll be a devil till I'm an angel But until then Hallelujah, gonna dance, 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 gonna fly I'm gonna take a chance riding high Before my nose is up, I'm gonna fill my cup I'm gonna live, 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 live Until I die Thank you very much Thank you very much. Pardon me, miss, but I've never done this with a real live girl. Straight up the farm with an actual arm full of real live girl. Pardon me if your affectionate squeeze Bobs up my goggles and buckles my knees I am simply drowned in the sight and the sound and the sense And the feel of a real live girl I've seen photographs and facsimiles that have set my heart off in a whirl But nothing can be getting swept of your feet by a real live girl Dreams in your bunk don't compare with the hunk of a real live girl Speaking of miracles, this must be it Just when I started to learn how to knit I'm all in stitches from learning what riches a wars can reveal of a real life. Thank you very, very much. Cockney bloke, and talking's not my line. I like to hear the others' views before I tell them mine. Now here's something you can talk about for hours on hours on end. For if you break a promise, you break a heart as well. So be sincere in every. Be sincere, that's all I ask of you. If you break a promise, just try to see it through. Oh, if you break a promise, you break a heart as well. So be sincere and as you life you go there's one golden rule I know do the same to others as my old mum did for me and the world will be sincere
behind me. If you order that. Truthfully, this is this is no ball. You know, I wanted a job, you see, and I went to the circus, you know, to uh, you know see if I could get a job, you see. And the ringmaster come up to me and he said, "Well," he said, uh, "Mr. Parr," he said, "the only job we've got here is a lion tamer." I said, "Lion tamer?" He said, "Yes. All you've got to do is go into the lion's cage and put your head in the lion's mouth." I said, "I should, Coco." He said, "You're scared?" I said, "No, I'm just careful." He said, I wouldn't be scared of that lion. He said, that lion was brought up in milk. I said, so was I, but I eat meat as well. <laughs> anyway, they advertise for lion tamer, and the most beautiful blonde you ever saw walks out, you know. And she said, don't be fighting, she said, I'm a lion tamer, and I know how to take care of this. So she walks into the cage, she walks in the cage, and the lion, the lion, he rushes her. She thinks quick, she unders a zip, and she claims the world. Not a stitch on, not a strap. And the lion, he stopped. And he, and he kissed her all over. He said, he said, there, would you do that? I said, yeah, get the lion out. <laughs> you know, I come from the posh parts, you know, Bethnal Green. I tell you, I was outside Bethnal Green Station the other day, and a, a, you know, a Rolls Royce pulls up, and the most beautiful blonde you ever saw beckons to me. You know, sort of, you know the sort, well out in front, lovely rolled over desk. That's a lot of madam, there's the iron ball stuck up there. And she beckons to me. Well, I didn't hang about it, I was in, I was in. Door closed behind me, and she took me to the posh part, you know, the other part, whopping. <laughs> she takes me up to her flat, and she says, take your clothes off. Posh, I said, go, go, I said, you take yours off, and I'll take mine off. She said, no, take your clothes off, and I'll take mine off. So I did, didn't I? Took them all off. She said, um, turn the lights off. I said, no, I said, you t take your clothes off, and I'll turn the lights off. She said, turn the lights off. She said, I said, no, you take your clothes off. She takes her wig off. She's I'm Jonathan Ralph, you're on candid camera.
Before I do finish up my last number, I would like to introduce you to someone who may have heard it on the radio, who may have seen it on the television. As a matter of fact, it looks a little bit like this. But before I do, can I just ask that lady over there, excuse me, would you just take this for me a minute, please? Just this, yes, would you? I wonder if you could just do me a little favour. Would you put that into your hand, eh? Would you show it here so everybody can see it? Show it to everybody so they can see it. And put it in your hand, eh? There's no way I can get near that now, is there? Thank God, I've been trying to get rid of that all week. <laughs>
Let's give him a nice round of applause as we introduce to you now our own little Bobby Parr. <laughs> Because I, I, I walked on top of the water, you see, because I fell in. <laughs> now, from a, from a distance, I saw this chap, you know, he was swimming away, you see, and suddenly he lost them. You know, I think they were the bikinis or something. And he thought, well, what am I going to do? The tide, the tide, it whips him out. The tide, it whips him in again. It whips him out again. It whips him in again. The first time it whips him out, he trips over what was God's gift from above. It was a bucket. He didn't get the bucket. He thought, hello, this is it. He picks up the bucket like that, and he walks out there like this. <laughs> and the two ladies gasp. <laughs> he tells her the first one, he says, I know what you're thinking. He said, you're thinking I'm a man from Mars. <laughs> the second lady turns around and says, I don't know what I'm thinking, but you're thinking there's a bottom in that bucket, mate, but you're wrong.
I know a bad old policeman, he's always on our beat He laughs at everybody while walking down the street He never can stop laughing, he said he'd never try Once he had to rest a man and laugh until he laugh. cried <laughs> He laughs upon for duty, he laughs upon the beat He's such a jolly red-faced man, he really is a treat He's too kind for a policeman, he's never known to found And everybody says he's the happiest man in town Stop to laugh out now.